YouTube, Planet Aquarium MN. Man. Got a shipment of some discus in today. Came in FedEx nice and early. I uh, got three fish here. This shipment is from Kenny's Discus. If you're not familiar with Kenny and Kenny's Discus, check it out on the uh, Simply Discus forum. Every month he gets a big large shipment, uh, imports a large shipment, and uh, they go fast. Uh, very healthy, colorful uh, fish all the time. He's, uh, Kenny's got a great reputation, excellent customer service, fair prices. Um, in this box, though, <clears throat> I've got three larger discus. Um, I wanted to add a little more size. I'm done buying the small two-inch size discus. They just they take a lot of work to raise. They take a lot of um, time to grow. And uh, I'm going to start out a little bigger. So from this point moving forward, uh, the smallest I will buy now is four inches. Um, and uh, in this box, I've got uh, a couple of four and a half inches. Uh, and then there should be one that's between four and a half and five inch. Uh, but I've got a, a albino white butterfly. A red spotted green albino intermediate means that he carries the albino gene and then I've got a red blushing so they're gonna add some nice color to my tank they're also gonna add some nice size to my uh, discus tank so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do an unboxing here I'll probably shut the video off here in a couple minutes actually once I get the uh, box open um, just to let these guys acclimate to the light a little bit. So there might be a little break in the action, but uh, be patient. Inside, Kenny uh, includes a little flyer for uh, AquaticSuppliers.com. They sell freeze-dried Australian blackworms, which is a great high-protein food for discus, which most discus will readily accept and eat. Uh, the Australian blackworms, the freeze-dried blackworms, the crude protein content is 66.35, which is insane. Um, some of the higher flake food, high growth uh, flake food that I have right now, it's only 55% protein with most flake foods being around the 46% protein. 66.35 uh, is insane and that's why I like to feed freeze dried blackworms to my discus. Um, I just wish all of them would eat it, not all of them do, but uh, it's still a great food. Kenny also has on here, let me flip this around, a little note. Thank you for the order as always. Enjoy. Thanks, Kenny. Also has the emails that we uh, shared back and forth in the order. Um, confirming one four to four and a half inch albino red spotted green. One four to four and a half inch albino white butterfly. One four and a half to five inch flushing red. So um, does a great job with packaging. The nice styrofoam container is probably a heat pack in there. I'm going to kill the lights, I'm going to kill the camera, I'm going to kill the lights for just a couple minutes to let these guys acclimate, and then we'll uh, pick up the video real quick. All right, YouTube, um, I got the uh, outer box off. Inside there's a uh, nice styrofoam box uh, with the discus in it. Um, Kenny does a nice job, clearly marks the boxes with live tropical fish, live fish on here, uh, don't drop, perishable. I mean, he marks this box up. Uh, so that FedEx clearly knows that these are live fish and uh, they need to be taken care of. It does a great job with the packaging. Nice styrofoam container inside. You know, there were some uh, peanuts in here. I removed most of the peanuts or some of them so I can get to the fish. He's also got a heat pack taped on the uh, bottom of the uh, top lid. And there's also one heat pack on each of the side walls for a total of five heat packs. There may be one on the bottom too, I don't know, but there's uh, no less than five heat packs in here, uh, which is outstanding, especially for me living in Minnesota. Our weather right now is pretty dang cold outside. It's like 35 degrees this morning. When this was delivered, it was actually below freezing. And uh, 
you know, I was home when this was delivered, so they didn't stay outside at all. But, uh, you know, you never know. Uh, you might get called away for something, and they might need to sit on the steps for an hour or two or three. And uh, without these heat packs, you know, these fish might not do as well. But he um, does a fantastic job. He's got uh, all the uh, uh, discus individually bagged, and then he's got all of those in a, uh, a larger bag. I'm going to try and lift these guys out without getting too many peanuts on the floor and on the pool table. Just checking to see if there's a heat pack on the bottom and there is not, but a total of four, or excuse me, five heat packs, five heat packs in here. So, okay, we'll go ahead and remove the individual bags now. Second here. Okay. And every time I bought from Kenny, he's had these things. I mean, they're in a nice, thick, heavy uh, mill bag, but he triple triple bags or quadruple bags these things. Um, there is no leakage in these things. There, there never would be. Um, you know, he definitely does an outstanding job with packaging, that's, that's for sure. I think what I'm going to do is actually cut the camera, and I'm going to take off a couple layers of these bags, and then um, we'll uh, get these fish, we'll start acclimating them to the 120. Okay, I've gone ahead and removed uh, the first layer of bag. Um, he actually quadruple bagged these things. And these are a nice thick, I don't know if you can hear that, that's a nice thick bag. They're quadruple bag. He puts newspaper around here. I've never asked why they do that. I'm guessing it's to uh, calm the fish, make it a little bit darker in the bag. Uh, probably helps the fish calm down a little bit for uh, shipping purposes. So you got another layer of bag off here. And there we got that big off. And that, that is the albino red spotted green. And that is a gorgeous fish. Absolutely gorgeous fish. Beautiful shape on him. Nice size, four, four and a half inches. Awesome pattern on them, and they, um, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get him in the, uh, drop him in the 120, and get him acclimated to the temperature real quick. We'll be back real quick for the second fish. Okay, the red spotted green is in the tank, uh, floating and acclimating right now. We'll take the next bag. I don't try to save these bags at all. They've got it clamped with a big metal clamp on here or, or closed with a big metal clamp. Um, you know what? I gotta go visit some clients today, so I need to get it done and do it quickly. A pair of scissors. Take the first layer off. Again, everything's quadruple bagged. And this is the red blushing. Gorgeous fish. Wow, look at the round shape on this thing. Absolutely amazing. About four and a half inches. He's about four and a half, maybe four and three quarter. Just a real rounded head on him. I mean, just so curved and rounded. Uh, thing looks like a pancake. But um, just another gorgeous fish. And of course, they look great in the bag. Once they acclimate to the tank, um, they're going to look even better. But I mean, just, just a real bright, 
fire engine red on this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and plop him in the 120. All right, that brings us to our last fish, and this no doubt is going to be the albino white butterfly. And actually out of the three fish that I bought in order from Kenny this month, this is the one that I am most excited about. Um, what I'm finding is that having discus in a planted aquarium, it really um, tends to, they tend to pepper up a lot more. And most of these hybrid colors, these uh, anything that's pigeon blood related, uh, red melons and golden crystals and you know, all these colors, they all have pigeon blood in them, and uh, they have a tendency to pepper when you put them in a planted tank. Excuse me one second while I turn my phone off. Um, and the reason I'm excited about this albino white butterfly is obviously the white or the albinos lack any of that pigmentation. So they're not going to pepper, and uh, I think I'll probably be picking up more and more albinos as time goes on. I've only got one other in the 75-gallon uh, grow-out tank right now, just a little guy. But uh, really looking forward to this fish. Oh, there he is. Albino white butterfly. Oh, wow, absolutely gorgeous specimen. Gorgeous specimen. Again, another four and a half plus inch fish. I'm going to get him acclimated. Just gorgeous pattern on the on the fins. So I'm going to go ahead and acclimate him, and we'll uh, pick the video up from there. All right, YouTube. I've got the three new discus uh, floating in the tank. They've been floating now for about 15 minutes, so the temperature should be uh, uh, matched to the tank temperature. I'm going to go ahead and cut open the tops of the bags and uh, I'm going to probably remove about half of the water that's in those bags. Those bags have quite a bit of water in them. I'm going to remove some of the water and then I'm going to start adding about a quarter cup to maybe half a cup of water every five minutes. And uh, once the bag gets full again then I'm going to empty it or drain it about halfway again and go through that process one more time. Uh, after which time uh, the fish should be ready to go into the tank. Now, <coughs> excuse me. It goes against every grain in my body to not quarantine these fish, but my quarantine and hospital tank right now is, um, I can't use it. It's being used for other things right now. So uh, unfortunately, I do not have a QT tank available. So I'm very, very, uh, I don't want to say concerned and reluctant, but I don't like doing this, but I really don't have any other option at this point. Otherwise, uh, in a perfect world, these three discus would go into a QT tank for at least uh, four weeks. I like to QT them up for a month. And um, unfortunately, I just don't have that option right now. So I'm going to go ahead, get these guys acclimated. Um, and then I guess we'll pick this up from, uh, you know, after the acclimation process, we'll show them in the tank. Hopefully they get along with everybody. The reason I also went with, I should say, uh, some larger fish rather than the small ones um, Discus, once you have an established group of discus, sometimes it's very hard to introduce newcomers to the group, especially if the newcomers are smaller than the other dominant fish. And these fish are all bigger than the most dominant fish in my tank. You can see the white butterfly right here, and then this red pigeon here right next to it. Those are the two dominant fish in this tank, and they, they run the tank. And uh, these new fish are all significantly larger. So they shouldn't uh, bear the brunt of any aggression. At least that's what I'm hoping. I guess we're going to find out soon enough. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these guys fully acclimated, get them into the tank, and uh, turn the lights out, and um, just let them chill. So I'll pick this up from uh, uh, just a few minutes. We'll, uh, we'll pick up the video again and um, continue. All right, there. YouTube, I'm about halfway through the acclimation process. What I've done is I've added about a half a cup of water every five minutes or every, um, yeah, about every five minutes to the bags. The bags got nice and full, so I've emptied the bags to uh, um, about one-third their capacity or maybe a little, little more than that, between a third and a half. 
And I'm going to fill those uh, bags up again. I'm going to keep adding about uh, half a cup of water every few minutes to these bags. Uh, once they're uh, full, again for the second time, uh, fish should be uh, fairly acclimated to the water parameters in the tank. And then we'll go ahead and we'll release them into uh, the general population. So anyways, I'll uh, pick up the video in just a few right, minutes. YouTube, I've got these fish completely acclimated now. Uh, it's been uh, seven, eight hours. Went to work, had a full day of work, got home. Doing a little bit of a water change now, but there's the uh, albino white dime, or excuse me, albino white butterfly. Just a gorgeous fish. You know, nice round shape on them. Beautiful pattern on the fins. Just a gorgeous fish. Here's the um, red spotted green, and this is an albino intermediate. He carries the albino gene, so if he's bred with a pure albino, uh, he'll produce, what is it? Uh, 50 or 75 percent um, albino babies and if he's bred with another intermediate he will produce 25 percent albino I could be wrong on those numbers and then here's the last one the blushing red he's kind of back here in this corner here um, just a gorgeous fish I'd like him to get out and uh, get underneath the um, the Phoenix Monster Ray light so you can see the red colors just explode on that big red. But um, I had to remove my white butterfly out of this tank. Uh, he was turning into um, just such a, he was such a jerk. I mean he, when I got home he had all three of these fish, the two right there and this big red, the big red blushing. He had them all cornered back into this one corner. Even though all of these new fish are about one to one and a half inch bigger than he was, he's such a jerk that he had all three of these fish cornered. So I actually had to remove him. I put him in solitary confinement, and I don't think that I'm going to reintroduce him to this tank. I'll probably try and sell him. If I can't find a buyer, um, you know, I don't know. I'll get rid of him some way or another. But uh, we'll find him a new home. But... Um, Already these other fish are coming out now my little um, Right back there my red valentine. He's always been kept right behind this plant here by that uh, uh, white butterfly the um, uh, What is this here the uh, golden lollipop he was always kind of harassed as well But I noticed that just the stress level in the tank these fish seem a lot more peaceful with that white butterfly out of here so um Anyways, I'm going to finish this water change. I'm going to pop on all the lights and try and get some better pictures of these new fish from uh, Kenny's Discus. Hopefully get Big Red out of the corner over there. And um, we'll take another look at these fish here in just right, a little YouTube. bit. A um, couple of these fish have come out now. The red spotted green and the white, or the albino white butterfly are both out here in the front. Uh, just both absolutely gorgeous looking fish. Um... I should say that red spotted green is an albino intermediate. This is this here is a pure albino white butterfly, just gorgeous fish. And then the uh, blushing red is still hanging out in the back here. Keeps swimming in the current. I've got a return nozzle aimed back there, and it keeps swimming in that current for some reason. Not sure if it likes it or if it's just stuck. It doesn't know how to get out, or I don't know. I think it's enjoying it actually, but. Um, that's just a massive red back there. But uh, that one was out just a little bit ago, but it's like, as soon as I go for the camera, they usually duck and hide. But um, that's it from here. Now moving forward, I do plan to make a couple minor changes. This small blue cobalt here, I'm gonna remove and put in the 75 gallon uh, bare bottom grow out. He just isn't putting on much size at all in this tank. Um, one of his, uh, brother, sister, whatever, uh, probably has a full inch on that one already. So I'm going to pull this one out, throw that in the bare bottom, grow a tank, and then I'm going to take my red and white valentine. I'm going to remove that and put that one in the grow out as well. Um, hopefully they'll start putting on some size. I've noticed that my discus in the 75 gallon bare bottom grow out are growing much faster than the fish that I have in this 120 planted discus tank so not sure if the water quality is all that much better um, but something's different it's causing those fish back there to grow a little faster so 
But I, I'm going to remove that valentine. I'm going to remove that little blue cobalt. And I do plan on picking up two more large discus next month, either from Kenny or uh, I think maybe Brian at Dolly VH mentioned uh, when he picked up a pair of uh, albino leopards. This past week, we've got a local uh, LFS that's going to be importing about 250 discus here next week. And um, he's going to have quite the selection. So I might pick up a couple large ones from him. So anyways, that's it from here. I appreciate everybody watching. If you're looking for discus, check out the Simply Discus forum. Uh, look up Kenny, Kenny's Discus. Uh, fantastic prices, great selection, and awesome customer service. That's it from here. And uh, appreciate everybody watching. And like always, we'll catch you guys later.